Gotta love it. Alright, here we go. So I'm gonna do these other two probably very sad side quests over here in Walud. What the fuck? That was not there before. That could be an S rank. That was not there before. What's up, motherfucker? Yep, it is a fucking hunt. It's an S rank, isn't it? Behemoth King. There it is. Here we go. I'm gonna set up in my chair for this one. Another of your list is guard dogs. Specimen of these two. Oh, that's interesting.
mistake. I'm not even that good, but it's just so easy. Oh, shit! I'm never opening my mouth again. I guess he has one more big one. He's also there. Timing on this thing is a fucking horseshit. This game is easy, guys. For like the fifth time ever in the entire game. Yeah. The game is fucking easy. The twister just takes you to zero HP every single time. That's cool. Is it ever gonna go away? my highest stagger damage so far. 87.6 or whatever that was. Oh fuck, oh fuck. Yeah, it's not a hard boss fight. It has one hard mechanic. 
It has one single one-shot mechanic, which makes it more of a gimmick fight than a hard fight. Cool. Oh, I got an Aura Calcum. Cool. No match for you, I Toggle. Toggle didn't do shit. I didn't use Toggle. Still not here. Today's exercises will consist of 20 sandbags for such duration as a show. Who keeps Conditioning. This is nothing short of torture. Oh, wait, this is where they get bearers. Kingdom of Elude hereby incorporates this institution wherein juvenile bearers are to be granted the opportunity to give themselves in service to the state as soldiers. Trainees succumbing to the crystal's curse or otherwise perishing are to be disposed of with all haste. The graveyard strictly reserved for the uncursed. Bearer disposal within its bounds is punishable by death. Disposed of. Herman wasn't exaggerating. It's a wonder he survived this place. I need to... I've recently learned that my own daughter was among the children turned to stone by the brutal training I subjected them to. I not so much as thought of her since handing her over to the authorities as a babe, but inquiries with the military confirmed it. It was her. I had been torturing my own flesh and blood. And now I see her everywhere. Today, one of the children smiled at me in the hope of receiving a few scraps from my table. It was her smile. The smile she inherited from her mother. The mother I killed for giving birth to a bearer. Their ghosts have all come back to haunt me. My daughters, my wives, all of them. All those children. So many have died at my hand. I can bear the guilt no longer. And so I've decided tomorrow I too must die. It will be the last order I give those poor wretches. The last torment I subject them to. I will command them to tear me limb from limb and inter my accursed corpse beneath the white tree whose crooked hands reach the sky in supplication. And beside me, my shame, my curse, the record of all their names, all those I have wronged. This reads like a suicide note. Did the director go through with his plan? There's only one way to find out. This must be the registry. Bad Bach Conservatory. Registry of bearer losses. I'm not even going to read these out. I'm not even going to read that. So many names. This place was a slaughterhouse. And where is the architect of all this misery? He's a Kashyyyk. Of course he is. It was only a matter of time, I suppose. This place is cursed.
their day. Level up. What's max level? 50? I'm done here. Let's get the registry back to Herman. 50. Brennan and the bear is just dead. Actually, shit. The entire village looks abandoned. Now, which house would a bookworm live in? Uh, the one with the quest marker on it? Bingo. Interest with Sun, even. I read. The oh god, the folklorist fabulary, the Moogle. No spirit or sprite appears more often in Valisthay and folk tales than the humble Moogle. Though they're occasionally painted as mischievous souls akin to pixies or imps, most stories depict them as clumsy, yet congenial spirits who delight in helping mankind with their daily labors. They're said to have sweet tooths, leading to the common superstition that one must not leave cakes or other sweet meats uncovered overnight, lest not remain but crumbs come morning. In appearance, they're described as being covered head to toe in soft white fur, excepting the small, dark wings by which they are somehow able to to take flight, and the brightly colored pom-poms that protrude from the tops of their heads. And yet there's one detail regarding the Moogle that most find more remarkable than even the orb that tops its brow, the fact that the creatures actually exist. Preposterous, I hear you cry. Everyone knows that Moogles are the stuff of legend. I quite agree, but every legend has its basis in truth. And in the case of the Moogle, the fact may not be, may be not so dissimilar to the fiction. Ancient bestiaries list the white mole whose feet do not touch the ground among the beasts of the realm. And the illustration beside the name? Why, it's none other than the Moogle. Of course, it's true that the creatures are not known to still survive in the twins in the modern day. Perhaps their miniature wings carried them to other climes? Perhaps they were hunted to extinction? Or perhaps, just perhaps, they do still live among us. Amogus, hidden away, far from human view. Hmm. From a distance, chapter 16, The Fall of the Bearers. The emergence of the first magic adepts was widely heralded as a gift from the gods. Indeed, the title with which those with the gift came to be commonly known is most likely a contraction of Bearer of the Heavenly Blessing the wording used by the tribunes at the time. Those born with the blessing were lauded as living crystals and granted high office and plentiful reward for their status as chosen ones. Over the years, this reverence for their kind would become a full-fledged religion led by the bearers themselves, a development that would prove faithful. The diverse nations of the time were unanimous of their disapproval of the founding of the church. While the authorities had for years welcomed bearers into positions of power in their own structures of state, they were mistrusting of an organization led by bearers for bearers. Efforts were immediately made to uh, was chasten the church and its followers, banning members from holding office, evicting adherents from their homes, and breaking up meetings by force. The church responded by forming a volunteer army to resist this persecution, and yet it continued, creating a cycle of ever-increasing bloodshed and rancor and a growing rift between those born with the blessing and those without. What began with beatings and street clashes would eventually spill over into an all-out war that consumed the greater part of the twins for nigh a generation and decimated the population of men and bearers both, the deluge of blood that stained the crimson land and left an even, the land crimson and left an even more lasting mark upon the minds of the Valisthean people. 
after the bearer's last resistance was crushed, the nations of Alistheia came together to sign the Continental Accord that initiated the system of slavery that persists across the realm to this day. Its well-known phrase, bearers are other than human, has its roots in the bitter war of the years before, being the unblessed's only excuse for their calamitous refusal to allow the blessed to decide their own destinies. Well, that's quite a read right there. This is it. But if what it says is true, bearers used I need to get this back to the Yeah, bearers way. literally used to have an organized religion and were often, because they were considered blessed by the gods, given higher positions in society. But because the non-gifted felt threatened by that, of course they had to, so soon, stranger. had to strip them of all their power. We've been watching you yeah, from you... a distance, so to speak. Subtle. Are you a bearer? I know who you are. Oh. Then we need not waste time on introductions. Hand me the book. Executor. You're gonna die. Leave it in our care and return to your life. Your care? Do you mean to burn it or bury it? That is not my decision to make, but by one means or another, its contents shall be removed from the common record. No fucking chance. Then I'll have to politely refuse. I won't let you erase our history. Then we find ourselves at an impasse. Did you read the note on the Very desk? well. The book can just yes. as easily be pried Did from I your dead hand. On it? Let's see, shall we? I might be able to buy some stuff. Impressive. But we have other means. We shall claim the book yet. Why do you want it so badly anyway? It lays out in no uncertain terms the vanity and avarice of mankind. It tells the shameful history of the persecution and oppression of a gifted few by a giftless many. Would you say that this interpretation was correct? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, based you on what I read... You don't know. Your sword may be sharp, but your wits are dull. So let me answer for you. There is no correct interpretation of history. That a series of events took place may be proved beyond a doubt. But there can be no single, immutable explanation as to why they came to pass. It is a question of numbers and of belief. If enough people believe that a set of events occurred for a reason, that belief becomes the truth. You no, know, this guy's woke as fuck, and unfortunately, like, what he's saying is accurate even in real life, dude. Just gonna say, just fucking throwing that out there, like, people do this. People, people, I mean, people literally, yeah. So you're trying to control the truth? We are trying to protect people from themselves, from knowledge, 
That would bring them naught but pain. That is all. You may keep the book. For now. The world is small. We shall meet again. Until then. Wait! Damn it. Let's get this back to Vivian. Perhaps she can explain what that was all about. Uh. Vivian. I found it. The book you lost. You... you found it. Thank you, Clive. Even though I asked this of you, I was not entirely sure it would be possible. I feared the executors had seized every copy. I met with one of these... executors. And I convinced him to let me keep it. Huh. He told me something. <laughs> that the truth is just a matter of collective belief. Yep. And that if enough people believe a lie... That lie becomes the truth. Yup. Yup. And I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, chat. I feel like this thing that Clive is saying right here is like... Mm, doesn't matter. It does. But it also means that the truth is not immutable. That it can be changed. Provided that those who wish to change it can convince enough people that their perspective is the correct one. As the sad history of the bearers proves. You said that the book inspired you to become a scholar. It did. Or its author, rather. She was a heretic, you see. A firebrand and a dissenter. A gallows stood ready for her in every corner of the realm. And by shunning society, or perhaps being shunned by it, she stumbled upon a truth so potent that an entire realm trembled at the prospect of its utterance. I, too, have always felt somehow set apart from the world of men. A stranger to my own species. She taught me that my solitude was not a curse, but a gift. And that, though my journey to the truth might be a lonely one, what I found at my destination would be more than worth the cost. Do you still feel that way? That you're not... one of us? Honestly? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Since coming to the hideaway, I find my thinking somewhat... clouded. Perhaps the result of studying mankind from a rather... closer perspective than I had intended. But the more I study the more I find value in this perspective. In looking not from the outside, but from within. So if you'll permit me, I'd like to continue my work here. Remember, Clive, when enough people believe, belief begets truth. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe in you, as I do. I'll try, Vivian. I'll try. I remember having so many conversations on this truth versus belief thing in college. Guys, I mean, it, it's literally, I mean, it's, it's real. I hear that you traveled to Ash, Sid. I did. Did you by any chance recover the names of my fallen friends? I did. Yes. I may. The bearer registry. The director was a brutal man. He got no worse than he deserved. The registry was all I found beneath the tree. There was no sign of a body. Nor any record of what happened to the children after the orphanage closed. I pray that at least some of them survived. All their names are here. The ones we lost. My friends. My light in those dark times. 
I can still remember their faces, like it was yesterday. Children who were taken from their bunks in the morning, never to return. No explanation ever offered. They'd be happy to know that you survived, Herman. But why did I make it out alive, when so many others died in that awful place? It's not your fault. And blaming yourself won't bring them back. Honor their memory. See that their names live on. That way, at least. They're never truly gone. Thank you. Sid. I'm going to write a book. An account of the horrors of Badbach. And the spirit of those its custodians sought to crush. All of Valisthea will know of our suffering. And in the name of those I lost, I will not let it happen again. This game is so fun. Neither will I. These records would have been buried for all eternity, were it not for you. <laughs> Thank you. Damn, I got a thousand experience points for that. Your Grace, my Lord, I trust your journey was not overly onerous. Cyril, you found a letter from Father. Yes, I have it here. If you would do us the honor, my lord. I know that I ask much of you in this coming war, but I see no other way to secure a future for our duchy and our family. Yet even should we succeed in subduing the savages and winning back Drake's breath, the threat of the blight still looms. And only with all Rosaria striving as one might, we at last overcome it. Striving as one might we last overcome it. At last. Oh, I've made plans to see us through, but such are the obstacles that stand in our way. It shall likely fall to you to continue my work. I know that you have been the strength of courage and you, you have the strength of courage and the will to do so. This shall be an arduous inheritance, and so I offer you another that you might be reminded of the love, the faith, love and the faith that I hold for both of you, your father. An inheritance? It would seem the late Archduke penned this missive shortly before his passing. The day before we left for Phoenix Gate. What are these plans he spoke of? His plans for the duchy, your grace. Your father entrusted them to my predecessor, the former bearer of the burning quill, who entrusted them in turn to me. The complete emancipation of bearers is their stated aim. But your father's dream did not end there. His Grace also spoke of building hospices to care for those stricken by the curse, with the blight spreading ever more widely across the twins. He wished to see men and bearers. Small wonder he did not think it achievable. But he thought it achievable nonetheless. Nor would he have entrusted those who would have stood with you. It's a pity only they... Mm. It is true that those most loyal to your father were the first to suffer the Duchess's wrath, but one at least remains. And she has come bearing gifts. Oh. What do you mean? Mayhap it is better that she explain, my lord. After all, the duties entrusted it is to me yes. by my predecessor extended only to recovering his grace's will and arranging a meeting with the one who might execute it, or a part of it at least. And where is this woman? She awaits you in the archive, your grace. Thank you, Cyril. Shall we then? Is this someone that I knew from my childhood or some dumb shit? Some character? My lord, that... your grace. I... I hardly recognize you. I am Goditha. Retainer of House Rosfield, loyal servant to the Phoenix and his shields. 
this is our retainer. This is the elderly retainer of House Rosfield that I've never fucking met. Like, why do they keep doing this? How are there so many fucking people, dude? How are there so many fucking people who I should have met? Fuck. Father. Like, at least in six in the world of ruin, you're going around interacting with people you fucking know. Like, oh, turns out I have my uncle Byron. Like, oh, turns out I have Godita. Oh, the hidden Phoenix cult. Oh, and the, like, dude, just fuck me. The Archduke Elwin entrusted me with the delivery of a gift. It better be fucking awesome. If what this bitch gives me is not fucking awesome, I'm gonna be pissed. I only hope you can forgive my tardiness in bringing it to you. Lift up your head, Lady Goddatha. It's gonna be a fucking thing to put on my wall, dude. For your service to our house and to our father. I merely did my duty, as any proud Rosarian would. My lady, perhaps you could explain a little more? No! Exactly is the gift you bring. Okay. As I'm sure you know, it has long been the cut. Indeed it has. Keepsakes when they come of Our age. Of and had he lived to see it, he would have presented you with the treasures I bear. Matching armbands for you both. Alas, he did mm. not live. He had intended to claim the heart stone with which each armband was to be finished himself, but it was not to be. Oh. And his gifts remain incomplete. Of course they do. It saddens me to bring it was your father's wish, but with his grace long you and off. Are you fucking kidding me? There was that much left? Nah, I'm Titans sorry, it's to too it, it is too much. But it's too much, man. Thanks, girl. Some of the blatantly repeated there it is. things. I don't know. The house Rossfield. Oh, I didn't hit it because it's in the air. Wow, that's very cool. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I want. Get fucked, Griffin. You got destroyed just like the Griffin on the fucking, on the wall. Griffins suffer something akin to the crystal's curse. Their own flesh slowly turning to stone over a lifetime of channeling ether. Unlike bearers, however, the effect is far more gradual and limited to a sack around their hearts. The slower progress of petrification resulting in the formation of a gemstone of rare beauty. 
A heart stone. Oh wow. Is this the heart stone? I expect Lady God. No, that's one that. of its testicles. Live. Where the fuck you like I will probably have more fun doing hunts because at least with hunts, you know, oh, it's not like, like sitting through cutscenes that are like Griffin depressing as fuck, you know? The Griffin is slain, yes, and I got the heartstone. It's right here. I think it's a heartstone. Yes. This radiant luster, like frozen flame, is just as your father described it. Thank you, my lord. Your grace. Your father would be so proud. Lady Godetha, the lapidary is ready. Thank you, Cyril. I will be with him shortly. If you would excuse me, I shall have the stone cut and set forthwith. Guthan, you don't need to apologize for that. Trust me, negativity will the sometimes leave me unenthusiastic complete. as well, but Pray, unfortunately, take them. we can't always be enthusiastic. They are yours, after all. Heartstone if is we were always enthusiastic, it would be real Garnet, fucking annoying. Or even Ruby. It symbolizes unwavering will and devotion. And the graven vines encircling the stone represent the unbreakable bonds between you. It's a message. Father knew we had enemies both inside and outside the duchy. Enemies who would thwart his vision. Only with unwavering devotion would it ever be realized. And okay. only if we stood together. As Phoenix and Shield. As brothers in arms. Only then might those enemies be overcome. Indeed. His grace knew the enormity of the task he would entrust to you, his heirs. But this was more than just a message. Mm -hmm. It was a promise. That he would always be with you. Thank you, Lady Godetha, for remaining the steadfast custodian of our father's will. Forgive me, my lady, but there is something I don't quite understand. The Undying told me that after father died, mother claimed all of the ducal treasures for her own. Even if the armbands were incomplete, she would surely not have overlooked them. So... How were you able to keep them from her? Because I was the keeper of the vault. Though I was but a lowly servant, your father spoke to me of his intentions for the bands. Of the deep love he had for both of you. What is keeper of the vault? Like, keeper of the family treasure vault? Because then wouldn't... Oh, so she's saying that since she had... Okay, alright, she wouldn't... Okay, she would... Annabella would never have known about them. Okay. And his hopes for your future. Mm. In the days before the disaster at Phoenix Gate, I discovered that the Duchess had ordered her jewelry be sent away from the castle. It was then that I knew she meant to betray us. I tried to warn your father, but it was too late. When word of the fire reached Rosalith, I... What do you mean you were too late? They could have been the day of, I guess, because all she said was that she discovered that days before she had sent it so this was not uh, this obviously was not when she sent them so it was maybe already already the day of that's conveniently tragic hmm. was short so i took up the armbands and i fled into the night and thank the founder you did yet my duty to your father was incomplete not knowing what else to do, I followed the griffin, thinking I might claim the heartstone on its passing. And so my pursuit continued, until Lord Cyril appeared before me. Lord Cyril He informed gone. me that his grace's will had been recovered, and that his sons were alive and well. Lady Godetha, on behalf of my father and all the people of Rosaria, I thank you for your loyal service. As do I. Thank you, my lord. Your grace. For coming back to us. For giving my service meaning. At least they're a nice upgrade. Holy shit. 
Damn, if only I felt this way when I got Genji Glove. Not bad. All right, we fuck with that. Fashion after those pictured adorning the wrists of the mythical founder in ancient engravings, which I don't know if I've ever seen. Archduke Elwin intended to gift these bands, bands to his beloved sons upon their coming of age, that they might serve to remind them of the unbreakable bond they share as proud sons of the ducal line and the unwavering devotion that would be required to see their duty done. Okay. Cool. That's okay. I wasn't expecting purple gear. Damn. Actual good reward from a, from a non-plus sign side quest. The bands suit you well. It must be gratifying to finally receive the inheritance that was denied you for so long. It is. <laughs> and we thank you for the part you played. Well, sure, but we didn't really know that it was being denied to us. This is a pretty weak side quest story. Yeah. And this, this dialogue right here is completely unnecessary in my opinion, but let's see what happens. Cyril. <laughs> if you would permit me to play my part a little longer, might I suggest that you make your way to your father's memorial atop Hawk's Cry Cliff? Let him see that you have received his blessing and that his vision lives on in you. Churlish <laughs> not to. Uh, bro, their inheritance is a country. Yeah. How about, like, all of Rosaria? What do you say? Every, fucking everyone knows we're back now, right? Like... <laughs> I know the Blight's obviously an issue, but, like, we have nothing to hide at this point. Every... Like, there literally is no threat to us besides Ultima at this stage. Like, everyone knows. <laughs> it's just... Uh, I don't know. Should we pay your father a visit? I think we should. I was kind of hoping that we'd get like the full on outcast, then come back to Rosaria, reclaim it for our own, build a, a garrison and bastion from there, use our supplies and home base from there to like build out and help places like uh, Martha's Rest and those kinds of things, because you know, that's like what I thought would make sense. <laughs> and then none of that happened. I was hoping to be able to offer him my thanks. Before we left for Origin. You're telling me that Joshua and I... Joshua technically... Well, he's the Phoenix. Like, we could... Like, we could lit... I'm not even... Kidding. Your father's helm is enshrined there. <sighs> then everything got it fucked up by the sense. Blight. And then we had to start it's fighting blue zombies. It from Phoenix Gate. I prithee claim it. For it too is a part of your inheritance. Why is it... <laughs> <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Cyril! And I do not doubt that your father would prefer it in your hands than perched upon some lonely rock. Then why is it? Then what? Then if you know, then what? Thank you, Cyril. You guys go get it. You guys just go get it. Pyro's talking like the quest NPC. Come on, Clyde. Stop. He's waiting. Stop. I wonder, it's so, I mean, I don't wonder, but I think it's so Just fun, like that. especially in like, in a, in like an open zone game like this. It's a, it, for me, I know I, I say it a lot, but it is a, such a bummer that you can't jump off of cliffs and stuff. And I, I get it, I get it. But like, come on, man. If I have a chocobo that can like float down, let me jump off of like high edges and like float down. It's, it's cool, it's fun. Let me do it. Yeah, Clive is the only king at this point, but again, we have bigger fish, fish to fry. <laughs> Father always fought fry. for what he believed was right. It wasn't until that night at Phoenix Gate that I realized I had never fought for anything. I always had someone else to do the Wait, fighting. Wait, Clive or Joshua? Well, technically Clive's older. So wouldn't Clive get the throne? Or does it def It doesn't default to the Phoenix, does it? Or does it? Wasn't Joshua meant to be the heir? Well, I guess. But I don't really know if that's some... I mean, who fucking cares about that anymore? Clive's the older brother. 
Joshua was the crown prince because he was the phoenix. Yeah, fair. And if that's Rosarian tradition and not because of his fucking cunt mom, then okay, fair enough. Edwin was never the phoenix, no. But he, but he was the king, but it skipped him, right? And then it skipped, it was rejected from Clive because of Ifrit. And then it went to Joshua as a result. So, yeah, yeah. It was just that it wasn't around. They didn't have, they didn't have a phoenix. So he was just the king without an awakened phoenix. And that was pretty much just, he didn't have the phoenix at all. So uh, the phoenix, yeah, it's a symbol of their flag. Like it's the, it's the symbol of their nation. So it, it, I guess it would make sense that Joshua would become king. No matter how fate conspired against him, he never lost heart. Well, would you, do you think that if these two were to even get to that point, do you think they would do it like that? Or do you think that they would just like rule together? Because isn't the whole point of this like the brotherly bond and how together they can overcome anything? Like, I almost feel like, like, dual, du like, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. Never look back. You think Clive would still defer to Joshua? Oh, uh, Clive has said a few times that he doesn't want to rule at all. But what if Joshua were like, well, I'm not going to fucking do it unless you're going to do it. And then what can Clive do? Then he's going to be like, well, I guess that's what we'll do. Because that's cool. Because <laughs> that's cool. Never stopped fighting. <laughs> he, he was the greatest of men. been trying to live up to his ideals ever since. Oh, Clive. That's screenshot worthy. That's kind of what I was the getting at, Paramer. Is that the old traditions, I wonder how much, like, the old half matter now that things have changed. And we'll keep trying. Because that's what he would have wanted. <laughs> what he would have done himself. Yeah, Joshua as, as the phoenix and as the as the king would make sense, and then Clive as the Ifrit and the first shield would, would be, I mean, just as they've always been, would be pretty I shall be sick. borrowing this, father, Make by if I may. But you might watch over us as we follow in your footsteps. <laughs> Clive with a katana is a very strange sight. I love the katana. So cool. Don't do it. Oh, I should have screenshotted it. We won't lay you down. Onward then. Onward. To the end. And to a new beginning. There are already people cosplaying characters in 14. Oh, I know. There's people that have like modded like the models and shit over too. Rusted Battle Helm. War is coming, my boy. We must make ready. Archduke Elwyn. Goes on my wall. If Joshua was worried about Jill, I should go and speak with him. I'm not reading all of it at this point. I'm sorry. It's 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 a lot, dude. It's a lot. It is so fucking much. Uh, Harpocrates. Okay, come talk to me. He said. That's what he said. It's usually me making demands of Harpocrates. I wonder what this is about. <clears throat> Maybe these ones I won't have to leave the hideaway, though. <clears throat> Maybe these ones will stay in the hideaway. If they do, then that's uh, then that's fine. You know, that's fine. Joshua, I read your message. You're right. Why is there so much? 
Jill is different. I don't think I'd realized how different. She built different. And, and since we returned from Drake's spine, I felt it more and more. Oh, what do you I mean? I suppose it's not hard to imagine why. She doesn't think she belongs anymore. And that's why we need to remind her she is still one of us. And to let her know that we still need her. Now more than ever. That you still need her. <laughs> what? How to do that. When last we were truly close, we were but children. Of course. Do you remember the time we accompanied Father on his annual tour of the Duchy? And Jill and I broke from the procession to ride up Man's Hill. To see the snow daisies, I remember. It was the first time Father had allowed us to join him. And when he realized you were missing, he had the entire retinue down to the pot boys combing the countryside. I right. don't understand this Jill thing. A thunderstorm falls. Is this fucking day. quest about Jill? Or is this fucking quest about you guys reminiscing about your fucking carriage ride with your dad? Okay? We literally just did a whole fucking quest about your dad, okay? I get the reminiscing, dude, but it is so fucking overblown. Like, I do not need this reminiscent dialogue in the middle of this fucking quest about a completely different character. Please, dude. Why is it so bloated? In a grove of oaks before we even made it halfway there. It was the Lord Commander who finally found us, and needless to say... He was. Oh, right, because Jill's with them. I'm a fucking dumbass chap. I get it, but still, dude, like, come on, man. Like, it just. What is this all about? You're pleased. And then it seems you and Jill have unfinished business. What do you say? What? Man's Hill. It's not that far. Oh, true. Though I suspect it is also much changed. Little in Southern Rosaria remains as it was when we were children. I just don't, I don't understand where this, what, why this Jill thing is even coming up. Like, we, I can literally go fight the final boss of the game. Why are we still doing this, like, is this a date? You're saying I should go and scout the area for bandits. Oh my fucking god, dude. If this doesn't turn out to be a date, I'm gonna be fucking butthurt as fuck. I'm saying... We should first go and see if there are actually still any snow. We're just gonna go there. get flowers. That's really all that we're. That's like what there's would nothing you do without me, Clive. What would I do without you? I actually don't know. I don't know what I would do without you, Joshua. Because apparently I'm not paying attention to Jill's. That's <laughs> just. It's the pacing is so strange to me, chat. It's so fucking weird. I'm sorry, like, I, I just can't not say anything. It's so, it's so, it's so awkward. It's just so jarringly fucking misplaced. Lordman Harpocrates, I received your note. Ah, yes. I expect you're wondering what this is all about. You spoke of making amends with Dion. Then I should begin by telling you that I was once his tutor. This was some years ago, of course, before I joined Sid in his hideaway. At that time, I was counted among the foremost scholars of Oriflam, and was accordingly invited to the palace. It's about Dion, so I'll listen. The young prince's education, all to ensure that the future emperor had a firm grounding in well, everything an emperor should: history, religion, commerce, government. Alas, our time together was cut short. When Dion left to join the Dragoons. You know, Kazuki, I, I, I hear you there. On another on, on, on the other hand, I'm I'm thinking like I get that, Gustameng. I get that, but we've already like it just it feels strange to me that we're coming back to revisit Jill's emotional state. After, like, the, the finally he and Clive came together to, like, be a couple and support one another. Like, it's just like, oh, well, now she's depressed because she doesn't have Shiva. It's like, dude, what the fuck is going on? Like, what the fuck is going on? How do you do a five-year time skip in your video game and then dump 25 side quests at the very end of the game before the final boss, 
how like how 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 can you literally i you could have you could have just taken that time and put the five year time skip in the game his study is no longer being deemed necessary i just I don't get it expected to meet with him again least of all here i'm almost certain they deleted in an, an area or two no i I have yet to find the right moment. His Highness always seems so preoccupied, especially when alone. I would not wish to disturb his ruminations with idle words of greeting. Not when I know he dwells upon the evil Ultima had him commit in the Dominion. The guilt weighs heavily on him, I know. But as you say, that was Ultima's doing. Surely you can't blame yourself. When I first met him, it was not guilt but his people's expectations that weighed heavily upon him. And I did nothing to ease that burden. He bore it alone until the day he could not bear it any longer. I mean, you were his fucking tutor, bro. It is one of my- You're not his fucking dad. Regrets that I only ever offered him my wisdom when what he truly needed was friendship. The blame for Dion's transgressions lies not only on his shoulders, but on mine. No. Yeah, the I yeah. Yeah, the pacing in this game is tough. It's a it's look, it's a good game. But it's uh it's not gonna it's not gonna go in my top three Final Fantasies. It's not. I I don't know if it I don't know if, yeah. It, it wouldn't be in the top three. It's a good game, but it's it's yeah. It's not in my top it's not even This is the place, game. but No. I'm sorry, Clive. There's no weapon spared. What are your top three? Six, what 14, and seven. I'm playing five soon, and I could always always change. Well, ten's Keep up looking. there, actually. I might even drop seven out of there Man's for ten. Hill cannot be the only place where snow I'd probably say grow. six, 14, and ten. Perhaps, but it's the only place I know of. You of. I think six is like the most whole and complete game. One of the most whole and complete games I've ever fucking played my entire life. Um... I would say that 14 is easily the best narrative I've ever seen produced in an MMO or expansion based game pretty much ever. And uh, the universe of seven is fucking phenomenal, not just the game itself, but everything that accompanies it, uh, including the other ones in that little series. Uh, and then 10 was my was my first one. So Titus and Yuno were like the very first two like key uh final fantasy characters that i ever like genuinely gave a shit about when it came to like a net from a narrative perspective and uh so that's why 10's up there for me and why not ask someone who might Plus know of another game someone at the backyard to the hideaway then let's hope one of the gardeners knows where to find snow daisies Yeah, I don't, I don't know which, uh... Say what you will. Maybe I'm pretty much, like, I'm so unspoiled on Final Fantasy games, man. I didn't even fucking know that... That the one, you know, that the one character in FF7 dies. I literally did not know that. Had no fucking idea. Up until the moment it happened, I was like... I literally just mouth agape. It was, uh... Kind of insane. What brings you down from the heavens, Sid? So I don't know what X I need your advice. From. Joshua and I are looking remember. for a place where snow daisies grow. I fought X death and don't even Preferably in abundance. Snow daisies. Then you'll want somewhere not too hot and not too cold. And where the winds are strong enough to carry the seeds. 
Uh, I reckon Man's Hill would be a good place to start. There in the Royal Meadows, perhaps? Both have similar climbs and the right elevation. If the Blight hasn't claimed them yet. Right. Okay. Okay. Hopefully we can find some. Did you learn where we might find our flowers? The gardener here mentioned the Royal Meadows in Sambrak. Ah, oh, the fields beyond Northreach. Well, if that's the case, then Yote was right. I recall that she kept the record of our travels, you see. So I asked her if she'd perhaps noted anywhere that snow daisies grew, and she mentioned Oilerfeist Bay. Okay. Whose shores border the meadows? Off we go then. FFT is rough for mobile, is it? The mobile version is a mobile version. Yeah. The final boss better be fucking spectacular. Because... Get the fuck out of my face. I'm just saying. See, this place has been flooded twice over. Purple flowers blooming next to a waterfall. Shouldn't be too hard to find. No holding back. It was a weird press release, Karen. Be nice. Jeez. No, it's uh, yeah. We're talking about the tactics leak from the Nvidia thing. About how we're hoping that that's true. <sighs> Dragon Tales, Dragon Tales, come along for Dragon. It's almost time for Dragon Tales. Pick it up, Clive. Come along, take my hand. Let's all go to Dragon Land. Fucking hell. Osman, I found the flowers you were looking for. You did? I think I did. Ooh, that did not feel good. You did indeed. My dear boy, thank you. You wanted to make Dion a gift of one, did you not? Shall I invite him to join us? Oh, uh, I don't... It's no trouble. I'll go and fetch him. What? Uh, was that a Final Fantasy title that they were just talking about? Because if it's not Final Fantasy, I don't give a shit. You can talk about whatever the fuck you want. Well, not whatever you want, you know. But... FFT? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Leah, yeah. That one. So, the, the three ones that I care about the most, about not being spoiled, is Five, Nine, and Tactics. So, those are, like, the three main ones that, like, just be real careful because I'm playing five next and I really want to play tactics eventually and I'm gonna play nine and so I'm hoping for a, a, a remake a remaster of one of those or something like that so those are the those are like the three main ones that I that I would yeah that I care most about 12 and 13 and stuff like it's gonna be a long oh, fucking time till we get to those games so I'm, you do I will forget literally me? almost anything you guys say no. about those games 15 it's time then. 13 12 all that bullshit no. only to the shelves our lawsman has something he'd like to give you. Master Hippocrates. Don't, it's like, don't spoil the end of the game, but like, you guys can talk about no. pretty much. I dare not show want. my face before him. You should play eight. I kind of want to eventually. I'd like not to play Not after everything I have done. I have taken countless innocent lives. And ruined countless more. Now you feel the All because I was weak. 
I have sworn to atone for my crimes or die in the attempt. But were I to meet with him again, and see in his eyes what I have become, I fear that my resolve might falter. Then that is all the more reason to do it. I have typo. Test your resolve. Prove to yourself and to him how strong it truly is. I do want to play it. You are right. I must, at the very least, offer him my gratitude. Very well, then. Take me to him. Follow me. Okay. Even now, I hesitate to approach him. What must he think of me? You'd be surprised. to Harpocrates. Pray. Accept my apologies for leaving your tutelage before my studies were complete. Your lessons opened my mind to a world quite unlike the one I had imagined from within the gilded confines of the palace. And I shall be forever grateful for the efforts you made to enlighten me. Lift up your head, your highness. The deeds of youth require no apology. That you took the time to visit me says much about the man you have become. Now, there is something I would like to show you. Is that a wyvern tale? The color is unfamiliar to me. Because it is unique to those found in the wild. Something in the harsh environment in which they grow lends them this striking hue. Their roots are indistinguishable from those of their hothouse cousins. But once they bloom, the difference is immediately apparent. In this flower, I see you, Your Highness. Its roots were the roots of a wyvern tail, with all that implies. But they do not define it, just as yours do not define you. I want you to have it, that it might remind you of this truth. Master Harpocrates. I would ask of you a service. Keep your gift until I have fulfilled my duty to the realm. For only then shall I be deserving of it. As you wish, Your Highness. I shall await your return. do not define us. No wonder my stepmother didn't like him. <laughs> For reuniting me with memories I had thought long lost. I shall not forget this.
two gil. Imagine. Ooh. Thank you, Clive. Were it not for you, I fear I might never have found the right moment to speak with him. Not to mention the wyvern tales. I shall plant their seeds that I might not disappoint his highness upon his return. I hope the soil in the hideaway is to their liking. Why, these flowers bloomed in the bleak, black wastes of Walud. I'm sure Nigel's yard will suit them to a tea. When it comes to expressing one's gratitude, I find that words are seldom sufficient. Here. What's this? A Stolas quill. Or more precisely, my Stolas quill. Yeah, it was only purple because they were growing it in the wild. Said Correct. But an owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. So consider this my wish for you. That one day you may put down your sword and pick up that pen. Well, when that day comes, I'll certainly have a lot to write about. Thank you, Harpocrates. It shall have pride of place in my chamber. Actual good side quest. Wow. Not that there haven't been other good ones. A lot of the side quests in this game are great. A lot of these last ones, though, have just been, like, kind of questionable. <laughs> so. Oh, ooh. Reduces Giga Flare cooldown time by six seconds. That's, um... That's fucking sick, dude. God damn. A gift from the very first Emperor of San Brek to his infant son. This ring has graced the hand of every dominant of Bahamut since. The ether it absorbed from the Icon over the years, aiding the next Imperial Scion in drawing out the full potential of their bloodline. But now the Empire lies in ruin, and that bloodline is broken. So let it be with Bahamut, as was always intended. Good quest with good reward. Every side quest is a fucking coin flip on if you're going to have a heartwarming moment or if you're going to want to throw your PS5 out the window. <laughs> that's like, yeah, that's that's painfully, that's true. <laughs> like, dude, the emotional roller coaster that the quests today have sent me on is fucking tough. Now we're back to this depressing shit. God damn it. You know, it's kind of a bummer. It's kind of weird that like, I literally just went and searched for a special... Where do we even start? A special flower. Yote mentioned the coastline. We can start there. And then my other side quest is me going and looking for a special flower. <laughs> Oh, is this is. You see them? What's up, Pumper? I did. Flowers and our friends. Hello, Pompernickel. What do you see, boy? What's up, Torgal? Is there a big dog coming? Oh no, it's a minute. Let's hope this is the last one. Only one way to find out.
don't know if I finished the block last chain. I think so. Pretty sure. I don't know though. So I'm not pretty sure. I'm not sure at all. You lose. <laughs> You lose! You lose! Remember, chat, if you're dead inside, side, sad <laughs> quest won't affect you. I gotta get was harder than I expected. No, it wasn't. What are you to. What? But found her. It was worth it. They're beautiful. Do you think Jill will like them? I fucking hope so, considering this is exactly what we came here for because we were under the impression that Jill would fucking like them. How's the game so far? It's, it's... Them. Depends on what part of the game I'm playing. <laughs> sometimes it's really, really, really good. Sometimes it's, it's not, not so great. Come on. Let's go. Found her. Was a great, what a great spot for a date. Now to bring Dion and Joshua here. That's what we're here for, right? <laughs> Set up the real date that everyone wants to see. <laughs> I, I want a date with Jill. What the fuck? Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. <laughs> Lamal thinks they're playing it for me. <laughs> no problem. <sighs> it appears my a lot of it is done. really good, trust the rest. me. As they say, voice acting's pretty you. fucking amazing. Well, the fights are amazing. You and the skies. Music's pretty good. We wouldn't want another thunderstorm now, would we? He's actually winging his brother. That's my man. Jill, there's something I'd like to show you. There is. And where might this something be? Pulls down pants. <laughs> it's uh, <coughs> not here. Now I know this is sudden, but how would you fancy a trip to Oriflam? Was that a question? Or Oh, we do bring her all the way here. Well, that's the, okay, there I see. There's so many. I see, I see. Okay, I'm happy with this. This is what you wanted to show me. It is a date. Let's go. I, I, I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. The smile on your face is enough. Oh, shut up, Clive. We've been worried about you. Joshua and I. Torgal's hanging back. Yeah, he knows what's up. Do you remember when I took you to Man's Hill? Or <laughs> tried to? How could I forget? You saw me crying and thought a change of scenery might lift my spirits. In the end, it earned me a nasty cough and a stern scolding from your mother. <laughs> but I felt wonderful nonetheless. Well, I'm sorry. I had no idea what I was getting us both into. But I couldn't bear to see you like that. Before we left, my chambermaid told me she'd overheard your mother talking about my marriage prospects with some of the noblewomen at court. They were debating whether it would be more profitable to marry me off to one of the high houses instead of saving me for the ducal line. No one thought to ask me what I wanted. Shocker. There was nothing to them. A pawn at best. I felt so trapped. So lonely. I didn't know. But I wasn't alone. You were there. Your hand in mine as we ran for those oaks. And I knew then, no matter what happened, I would be alright. I'll never forget that feeling.
before they start talking again. Hold on. <clears throat> oh, wow. Give me like a little flower. Before we crown. broke camp, the morning after the storm, do you know what I did? No. What? I slipped away from my governess to climb the tour. And from there, I saw a sea of petals, all reaching for the sun. And I realized that no matter how terrible the night, dawn would always come. That, that you, that you would always come for me. And you have, again, and again. He starts to come and then he pulls out. Where do you see us? When all this is over? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> Not here, though. I think I've outgrown the twins. After everything we've been through, no, my the realm just seems so small. I'll need some space to spread my wings. No, I didn't move my hand until you said something, actually. <laughs> That's what you'll have. Stop at nothing to see that you do. There we go. I never was much good at garlands, but it'll have to do. I'll treasure it forever. Thank you, Clive, for this, the flowers, for everything. It's exactly what I needed. You are my treasure. Oh, oh, that's a great shot. Oh, that's a great shot. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait for Ariel to come home. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow can't come fast enough. <sighs> we should probably be getting back. I expect the others are wondering where we are. You're right. There's still much to do. And we'll do it together. Oh yeah, you like Jill? Name your three favorite things about what she does. <laughs> I have a lot of points. Shiva's Kiss. Ah, nice. Song of Winter, Autumn Gone, From Frosted Lips, Oblivion. There you go. Oblivion. Sick. Produces diamond dust cooldown by almost eight seconds. Oh my goodness, that's pretty nice. That was nice. That was an that was another good one. Joining hands with Jim. Delivery of it is just, I don't know, whatever, dude. It's fine. Do you have a moment, Clive? I do, because you what have a green it? marker over your head. It's the Duke, unsurprisingly. 
His eminence has the assumed Duke. full control of the garrison and put every able-bodied man to work on the fortification. The town was left all but unguarded, so Philippe was compelled to form a citizen's watch to fill the void. And though my dear boys have been characteristically willing to assist him in this, they want for bodies. <laughs> so I was wondering if you would lend them your strength, that the people of Northreach might sleep easier. If only for a few <laughs> Remember when you chose Taria over Jill? <laughs> no. I don't remember I don't remember that. Whatever you need. Thank you, Clive. What would I do without you? Philippe told me he had men stationed at Where can I find the mistress of this establishment? Here, my lady. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? My name is Sabine. And it is my displeasure to be the daughter of the Duke of Oriflam, who I understand is causing you and your town no small amount of trouble. Yep. I wish to speak to you about what might be done. Let's go. Very well. Let us speak. Might get somewhere here. I trust here. you'll forgive me, Clive. Absolutely. Our conversation can wait. Please. Proceed. She's gonna suplex As something. You know, my father is a most overbearing and supercilious man, and I join you no in objecting around. to his every action. Indeed, I owe you my thanks for continuing to argue against his reckless plans. Yet I fear he is not one to be swayed by reason. No, he must be made to face the consequences of his actions. It's an Arista hat. And who would make him do this? <laughs> I would. Myself and several other like-minded individuals. Were you to join us, we would surely have the strength to drive him from Northreach for good. Oh. Does that not seem a trifle drastic? Drastic action is precisely what is called for. Unless you are content to see your people downtrodden and dispossessed. My father would have it that citizens exist only to serve the Empire. That they should be forced to make every sacrifice to ensure her revival. But he is wrong. It is not the people who must serve the Empire, but the Empire who must serve her people. He's always been like this. Scornful of the opinions of anyone he judged beneath him. But he cannot be allowed to ride roughshod over the common folk any longer. We must fight him. By all possible means. Fight him? No. My purpose is to quell the tension in Northreach. Not to stoke it. Respectfully, my lady. Our only chance of saving this town depends upon every one of us uniting against our common enemy. Your father and his followers included. While I understand your frustrations, I cling to the hope that he may yet be won round. False hope, I assure you. But I see that your mind is made up. I shall bother you no longer. If you will extend me the same courtesy, I bid you good day. That is certainly go well. a spirit. Indeed. But unfortunately for us, that spirit is only likely to harden the Duke's resolve, which may be enough to seal the fate of this town. Not that she cares. This is all about her and her father. Families. I'm sorry, where were we? Ah, yes. I was about to tell you of Philippe's plans for the town watch, but perhaps it's better that you heard them from him. I believe he's in the market, if you'd be so kind as to seek him out. Right away. It's just a pity I cannot join you. I'd like to see the two of you in action together. I would have loved seeing Clive and Jill have a more mature relationship instead of the Chastable, they won't they? I mean, they're in their damn 30s, yeah. Yeah, it does seem, it does, yeah. I would say it does come off a little bit juvenile, but whatever. Your town needs you. Saw the captain just now. I always felt it was less of will they, won't they, and more of a when will Gav stop busting in and interrupting. I mean, when they go in for it, it's not like in a moment of like weird uncertainty or like, no one's like drunk or anything, so like they were both obviously wanting that. So I get where I get what Alec is saying as well. As like it was inevitable, pretty much from and that what moment. Does the day have to but the say way that they kind of like tease around it is like. So you are content to abandon. 
please, I beseech you. If you are a true son of Northreach, you must fight to defend your home. That's exactly what I am doing, milady. Or trying to, at least. The land is crawling with fiends, and someone has to keep watch. Even when our true enemy is hiding in the garrison? Fine. You're not the only able-bodied man in Northreach. Thank you so much for your help. She cornered you too, then. Could hardly get a word in edgeways. Like father, like daughter, eh? She made an uninvited appearance at the Vale earlier, hoping to convince the Dame to join her in fermenting rebellion. <laughs> I bet that went well. Her ladyship seems to have a way with people. Anyway, what our mutual friend thought. Oh, right, as always. We've had some reports. She's They're back. Seems that way. We haven't been able to conf. Right. You know. I'm on my way. Thank you. I'll look into. Let's go. Yeah. He does got that Dracula drip. Not everything can be Castlevania, though. You're right. Damn it. The reports were true. I need to stop them before they get to the town. Sixty fucking sixty ability points, dude, and some magic dash and all. Why right, dude? Sick. Call that a test, Ultima. Clive, it's me. Are you all right? I am. I dispatched the few that I found there. Well, that's something, I suppose. But what were they doing south of town? We might be able to fend off an attack from one side or the other, but from both? Do you have eyes in the north? Some. I should probably go and have a look, though. Just you head back to Northreach. What do you mean? Her ladyship's been busy working her magic on the townspeople, stirring up ill feeling towards her father. What? This is exactly what the dame was afraid of. I'll do what I can to calm things down. Be careful out there, or don't worry. I'm not like you. This is not a good situation. Do you not see, father? The people of Northreach have given enough, and only a fool would ask for more. Listen to me, Sabine. Where would our people be without their country, hmm? Uh... The Empire is their sword and their shield. It is she that ensures they can live without fear. And now she teeters on the brink. No, it's because of you that they live without in fear. Without their sword. How will the people fight? Without their shield, how will they protect their kin? Can the unarmed stand against the advancing hordes? No. But there is yet hope. A new shield, a new sword. 
a new empire. We can rebuild Sandbrek, just as Great Grieger wills it. Perhaps we could, Father. But we don't want to. Not if it is built on the broken backs of the people. Please, let us not quarrel in the street. You must see that no good will come of this. Our fight is not with each other, but with the threat that draws ever closer to our gates. A threat that your sword has yet to rid us of, your eminence. You will hold your tongue, whore! You may have filled my daughter's head with your heresy, but I will not be corrupted! Corrupted? Your daughter's opinions are her own, as you would know if you had ever deigned to listen to her. At least I hope they are your opinions, and not posturing born of a family feud. Northreach deserves better than that. Northreach deserves better than you, Carla. Yes, I know who you are. The slut of Twinside who bedded a branded. <sighs> Jealous, are you? That a woman might choose a bearer over a pious man of Grieger. Clive! Oh. I met a swarm of thralls coming south from Oriflam. Hundreds of them. Too many to count. God, oh, fuck. If no work on the fortifications has scarcely begun. We will retreat to Cair Norvant and there make our stand. Uh. Did you hear me? That was an order. While this is but a heartfelt plea, let us make our stand here and protect our homes. Protect those that we love. Together, for Northreach! You heard the dame. What are we waiting for? Pikemen to the gates. Archers to the roofs. Quickly, come on! But she is but a common whore, yes. And we'd follow her to the gates of hell. <laughs> Get fucked. Not literally, though. That guy's not getting any puss. That guy gets zero puss. <laughs> Men have their he orders. gets zero ass and zero puss. Following them. I got them spaced out at regular intervals. Whichever direction the thralls strike from, they'll She's be She's got that grip. Yo, Thank you. <laughs> Rest assured, the people will play their part. <laughs> the herbalist has donated her stock of medicines to me. Should any of your men be injured, take them to the Vale. We'll see to them there. Thank you, my lady. I will. The gates of hell in my part two. Is a, is a, a you still want for numbers? Unlike the enemy. I only euphemism. hope I can go some way to evening the odds. Philippe, can I leave the south in your hands? Of course. I'll lead a party down that way, so what about you? I'll make my way up the road to Oriflam. I fought a few of these things. All right. But take care. Thank you. Both of you. You can thank us when it's over. Till then, madame. Come on. Yeah, you're just a, a whore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Explosions <laughs> like wah. <laughs> like okay. <laughs> Everyone in town knows. This is more like it. Like, <laughs> come on then. This is more like Test it. Me. Oh yeah. And then The two of incels. You fucked a bearer. And? Is it over? No. 
said there was hundreds. It's only just begun. Jill is in the party still. Yep. of them. I wonder how the others fared. Better hurry back to town. Come on, Toggle. Watch, like everything's completely fine over here. We go back to town. The guards did not hold off the south side of town. Everybody's dead. <laughs> Everyone died. Good job, Clive. Story's over. Let's go fight Ultima. I guess they did just fine. Clive, it's good to see you. And you. The road to Oriflam is clear. How did you and your men fare? Well, we ended up fighting for our lives down by the lake. Took a few nicks. Glad to hear it. Well, it seems we've survived. I thank you both for answering the call. You were right. And I was wrong. I had thought that the <laughs> only way to unite the people was under the banner of Empire. That without a strong hand to guide them, they would drift apart. To be born hither and yon by the eddying currents of fate. But you brought them together. Not by force. Nor by the exercise of goddess-given authority. But by simply being one of them. By knowing what they feel, because you feel it yourself. Our purpose was ever the same, Your Eminence. You were merely distracted by a loftier vision of empire and glory, while our eyes beheld matters closer to home. <laughs> you have the right of it again, as did you, Sabine. His radiance said it himself. Sandbreck is naught without her citizens. I forgot that. And I am sorry. I'm sorry too, Father. I should never have taken things so far. I only wanted you to understand how the people felt. How I felt. But my anger got the better of me. Do not blame yourself, my dear. This was my doing. It's a relatable feeling. <laughs> I should have listened to you. To all of you. Your eminence, your ladyship. I do not doubt that you came here with the best of intentions, but I believe the same could be said of us all. We all want safety, security, prosperity, not just for Northreach, but for the entire realm. And we may yet achieve it. If only we work together <laughs> Paramer, but get the fuck out <laughs> in this 
Yes. We shall. Thank you, Your Eminence. Now that that is settled, I must go and see to the wounded. The Vale's doors are always open to any soldier in need of relief. And today there are more than ever before. I'm, I'm, mm, I'm happy with this story for Isabel. I'm happy for the conclusion. I think it's acceptable. How we solved it, I think, is kind of laughable. Like, you guys keep making jokes about, you know, just, check <laughs> cared when nothing solves a complicated familial dispute like killing 10 ghosts in a wheat field. You know, it's just like, that part of it is like, not great gameplay wise and like, does it make a lot of sense? No, but like, it's more about the defense of the town. It, it's just like, the problem is I just feel like the gravity is not like, it's not there. It's not like built up enough. If I went out in the field and there was like four of those big guys or something, like that'd be scary. But there's just like no sense of actual threat for me as a player. And so it's like kind of lame in, in how I as Clive get to experience it. Because all I basically did was go, like you said, killed some ghosts in the in the field. Um, and that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. But like the actual story, like for Isabel and everything, I think is fine. Madam Isabel is Isabel. a rare soul indeed. In these dark times, I see that it is not men like me who should lead the realm, but women like her. <laughs> they flat, they pulled one of those too. Wow, they pulled that in there too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. If only I'd listened to her when I had the chance. <laughs> Forgive me for saying so, my lady. No shit. But you still do. She literally led this place before you came, dude. <laughs> like, he's so fucking dumb. The dame said it herself. We can turn things around. Yeah, we've heard you stole his voice. To work I think together. we did. I'm pretty and positive. That goes for we did. you too. I can't remember who it was. Now. Oh no, maybe it wasn't Yostola. Sorry, no, it was Lise. I think that's what it was. I thought initially it was Stola, but I think it was Lise. One of you. Eloise. Yeah. Well said, Captain. Let this be a new beginning, not only for Sandbreck, but for us. Well. Since there's nothing more to be done here. I agree, Zebrios. I should see fully if agree with any help moving the wounded. We have some abilities that would be absolutely fucking awesome to just like go nuts against like dozens of enemies with. It's why you see me like it's like when we go on the field and you see a group on the on the right and a group on the left. I don't even start fighting the group on the right until I get them all together because that's how I want to fight, you know? I want to fucking fight a bunch of shit at once and like fucking explode them with Shiva abilities and shit, you know? But they just like never really give you that. And that might be because of like animation no like limits or something, but Robin Addison doesn't have credit for anything here. Is that the, uh, who's Robin Addison? Oh, Yastola. She's just Yastola. Probably uncredited. I don't think that they would have a voice in there uncredited, right? I mean, that's kind of. How goes the treatment of the wounded? I'd be happy to man one end of a stretcher if it would help. <laughs> You've helped quite enough for one day, Clive. Thank you. Don't mention it. Oh, but I must. After all you've done for this town, it is the very least you deserve. Tell me, if Northreach had fallen, what would you have done? A woman of your means could find a home anywhere in the realm, but I sense you would rather have died here. I think the problem, Zebrius, is that for all of the other actors that we recognize, we see their credits. So for Yastola to have this off merchant thing and have zero credit seems kind of like unfitting considering the rest of the credits that have been given. I don't know. I don't know. Seems like, why would they just forget? It's a long you know I mean? story. For you, madame, I have all the time in the world. <sighs> Very it well. Could, it could happen, it could happen. Long ago, I had a life in the Crystalline Dominion. Oh. I was Carla then, courtesan to the nobility. So sought after was I that it was only they who could afford my time. Alas. 
Those halcyon days were not to last. For naive as I was, I fell in love with a bearer. He was my master's guard. The gentlest man I have ever known. Mm. After they discovered us together, he was whipped bloody and forbidden from ever looking at me again. And so we fled. Not that we had anywhere to flee to. We wandered, aimless and starving. Half dreading, half praying that the next day would be our last. Until we found ourselves here, in Northreach. It was the veil that took us in. That fed us, clothed us, and healed our hurts. Those that could be healed, at least. My love was already too far gone. He passed away? He did. Not long after we arrived. But at least we were able to share a few moments of peace before the end. It was the greatest gift I have ever received. But the generosity of this town and her people did not end there. The men and women of the Vale supported me through my grief. Shared in it, though I was still a stranger to them. They treated me like a sister. And so I swore that I would always do the same. That I would return the kindness that Northreach showed me. That I would repay my debt to the Vale. That's a little heartbreaking. Thank you, Isabel, <laughs> for sharing this with me. <laughs> You're a lot like him, you know. Perhaps that is why I have such a soft spot for you. Never stop fighting, Clive. And I shan't either. I know that it will not be easy to keep Northreach together. But our efforts will be rewarded. Just look at us now. The people, the soldiers, even the Duke of Oriflam and his daughter. All united in defense of this town that we have come to call our home. And what of you? Can we count on your support too? Always. I knew he was gonna say it. I should have just said it. it. It literally crossed my fucking tongue, dude. I should have just said it. All right, let's see how, what goes on here with Lubor. Last we found out, you know, he was a, uh, um, he's a bearer. He used his magic and exposed himself uh, in order to save children. Uh, from, I think it was an Akashic something. Um, and uh, now there's a, a divide, a rift in this, the city of, or town of Dalamil, uh, because some people still support Lubor, and some people uh, uh, really uh, have a lot of disdain for him because he's a bearer, and that, it, and that he's lied to them and kept it a secret the whole time. But seeing how bearers are treated and this game, you know, can't necessarily blame Lubor for not wanting to tell people. And he's done a lot for the village, so I think that people need to be able to see past it, obviously, but that's from what the mind of someone us? who doesn't feel betrayed, so. Here to help me pack. Thanks, but I'll be traveling light. Yeah, bandits or something. I'm almost finished already, in fact. You're really going to go through with this, then? I am. But before I go, there is one small issue I'd like your assistance with. Well, two. Oh yeah, and they tried to stone him to death. And then the kids got in the way, and then when the hit kids got hit with the stones, then all the people felt bad, and then they stopped. In fact, if it's within my power to help you, I will. It's the children. I refuse to let them share in my disgrace. And if I leave them here, they surely will. Our friendship would see them ostracized forever. Don't be racist. Look how useful he is to the city. Not the greatest argument, FF16, Lamal. <laughs> well, I don't think that's the the only argument to be made. I wouldn't say just... I wouldn't say the word useful. I would probably focus more on how much he cares about the city and the people that live in it, like these kids. But I yeah, I get what you're coming from. 
and like how they I can think of, of only one place where they are certain to be safe Make a look. and provided for and loved. The hideaway. Oh. Take the children to the hideaway? Of course. Um, so these are like they're they're like orphan children, right? Like we're not like taking these kids away from their parents or something, are we? The children would be more than welcome. Thank you, Clive. I will not forget this. Nubor, are you still here? What is it, Ferda? You look pale. There's been a flood in the Velcroy, a damn big one. The League of Outlaws encampment was completely submerged in ether. What? Every last one of the bastards has turned, and they're headed this way. Mm -hmm. Bandits are one thing, but Akashic bandits are quite another. <laughs> That gets me, dude. Bandits are one thing, but Akashic bandits. Oh! <laughs> They're literally the fucking same, dude. God. I not stand a chance against them. Uh, we need to evacuate. It's so, no time to lose. Uh, Further, uh, gather the men. They're literally just blue. We must make they don't do anything different. Dude, part of me almost feels like... <laughs> Party almost feels like non-Akashic bandits are more dangerous than Akashic bandits. Well, what are you waiting for? Yes, my lord. Just... <sighs> Clive, change of plan. The children stay with me for now. I need you to find Conrad and Natalie. Tell them to prepare for a full and immediate evacuation. Okay. Understood. I'll do what I can to convince everyone else. Wish me luck. I think they mean that as zombies will never stop, but human ones will retreat when you beat a few of them. I just... Oh, God. What's That's kind of what I was thinking, Dryad. To me. They're coming. You need to evacuate. Know your place, Bearer. Put a shirt on, dude. What's up? What's up, sweets? What's up, Zoo? Why do they always have to make such a fuss? <gasps> but obviously, emotion? mechanically in the game, they're that's... the same. I know, that's why I'm laughing, because... Uh, obviously, yes, that's why. Are you expecting his yeah. lies again? By the... Because mechanically, they're no different. Ah, it's you. What do you want, Lord Underhill? To pass on an important message. There's been an ether flood out in the Velcroy. The camp where the so-called League of Outlaws were gathering has been swallowed. They're no longer just bandits. They're Akashic now. And they could be here at any moment. You need to begin preparing for a full-scale evacuation right away. Oh, do we? And who was it who gave you this disturbing news, might I ask? Lubor, perhaps? The man spreading the same poison out in the square as we speak. You may believe his lies- It actually didn't come from Lubor. Like, my lord, but we know better. But why would he lie about something like this? Some twisted attempt at revenge, perhaps. If he had not been unmasked, he may well have been elected our leader. A great honor for one of his kind. One he might well feel aggrieved at having been denied. Lord Underhill, forgive me, but it has become all too evident where your sympathies lie. Are you serious you right now? Be trusted, and neither, therefore, can you. Are you fucking you kidding me? me? But for the sake of your people, ask yourselves if there is any chance that this is true. There isn't. You can be certain of that. Now be off with you. You're making a mistake. It's no use. Words will not move them. Oh, hey! We must find another way to ensure Dalamel's survival. You're right. Let's speak to Lord Ferda. I got everyone with me. Let's Why go. Why do they always have to make such a fuss? You have to listen to me. They're coming. I think we'd better shut up. What's Lubor raving about now?
Lord Ferda. Sid, what's wrong? I went to warn Conrad and Natalie about the Akashic, but... they wouldn't listen. They've convinced themselves that nothing Lubor says can be trusted. The bloody fools! Which means the town guard can't be counted on for support, but I can. If there's anything I can do to help you defend Dalamil, you only have to ask. I appreciate it. Sid! Ferda! I've been looking for you everywhere! Victor? I thought you'd left. I couldn't abandon a friend in need. And Blue Boy is in need at this very moment. Come quickly. Oh, for fuck's sake. What now? You have to believe me. The Akashic are coming. They don't eat. They don't sleep, they don't tire, and they don't care who they kill. They're unlike anything that's come before. There won't be no parley, no mercy granted! We may have saved the town once, but this is different. I do not ask that you forgive me, but please believe me. If you do not run, you will die. You will all fucking die! Huh? You'd like that, wouldn't you, Bearer? Yeah, with us out of the way, your kind will be free to claim Dalamil for yourselves. You should run! Run, Bearer! Yeah. Yeah, run! Yeah. Far, far away! Just go! Yeah! 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 Fucking jerks. Chat, you fucking spoiled it. You thought that the last fucking quest that I did was this one? No! What did Lubor ever do to you, hmm? Fuck. He solves all your stupid problems and he keeps all of you safe. You know there's nothing he wouldn't do for this town. Who was it who made that cleaver you use every day, Conrad? And what about your counting table, Natalie? Who fixed that? Whose men make sure the streets are clean so all your boots don't get dirty? Who spends all day every day making sure things run smoothly around here? And none of you ever say thank you, ever! Whoops. Mm, it's fine. It's not a big deal. I thought it was going to be a lot less than this. The kids are talking a lot more But did Lubor ever complain? Well, does he ever stop smiling? He keeps this whole place going! And you act like he doesn't even exist! Lubo, we've heard enough. No! Wait! We will not run. The town guard will not abandon the very place it is sworn to protect. And I will not give up for lost the stores that we labored so hard to fill. <sighs> so tell us, how do you propose we deal with these Akashic of yours? Of yours? I... S I I, I... We won't run, 
but we will fight. All right, then. <sighs> Fine. Gather round if you don't want to die. Allow me to explain the situation. The ether flood occurred near the village of Cheratina, deep in the Velcroy. The place had been abandoned for years until the League of Outlaws decided to make it their base of operations. Now they're all turned, and if the scouts' reports are correct, heading in this direction. They are mindless monsters. Driven up with the bandits, we at least knew how and where they were likely to attack. When these creatures come, Delamil will have the bitterest fight it has ever faced. I saw it more like he's helped everyone in the town because he cares about them, but yeah, the speech does come off that way listening to it. Yeah, that's why I was saying, like, it would be good to focus more on, like, Lubor as a person and, like, caring about him as a person and him looking out for everybody and not just listing off, like, the things that he has, like, physically done. It's kind of weird. It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's on its hands. The town guard will muster at the north gate. The rest of us will take the south. Both forces will provide men to serve as scouts and messengers, ready to spread word of the size and nature of the Akashic force as soon as it is spotted. And as soon as it has been, we will converge on its position. Conrad, can I count on the support of the town guard? Always. I leave the selection and coordination of the messengers in your hands, Victor, and the command of our men in yours, Ferda. If you would both be so kind, consider it done. As you wish. Natalie, I would ask that you and your people have the townsfolk barricade themselves inside the bathhouse. And tell the merchants not to waste time securing anything beside the essentials. Preserving life is our one and only concern. As long as we survive, it doesn't matter what trinkets we might lose. Our riches can be regained. And if anyone doubts that, let it be known that the Briar's Kiss stands ready to cover any losses. Very well. I shall tell them. Where do I fit into this plan? Yeah, Motorola, that's how I feel Where about else it. But the most perilous place of all. I would like you to travel to the home of our erstwhile League of Outlaws, Cheratina itself. The main host is most likely still there, and Dalamil will not be safe until it is eradicated root and branch. A little gardening. How pleasant. I doubt it. I have a feeling these weeds will be particularly stubborn. Luckily, so am I. So you are. All right, then. We all know what we have to do. Now it's simply a matter of doing it. Yeah, they should basically be... <laughs> Looks like everyone's ready. Kiss and Lubor shoot. Better not dude. keep them waiting. Mike. If I were Lubor, I'd probably still help them because I think that Lubor, like, wants to see that through. But. Uh, did they deserve his help? No. Yeah! Absolutely not. There it is. The flood. But what's waiting for us inside? Akashic, what are you fucking talking about, dude? It's the same fucking thing every time. A reskinned enemy that I saw fucking 60 game hours ago that's now blue? What do you mean, what's waiting for us? Look. We can't leave a single one alive. Yeah! Yeah! Surprise 
is the same thing I fought in the last fucking quest. that I might need a drink or two more, maybe three drinks. What are you talking about? <laughs> the League is disbanded. I should get back to Dalamil and see how the others fared. That's insane, Christy. What the fuck? All the Akashic we were able to find have been dealt with. Seems that might be the last of them. The last of them here, perhaps. Lubo, Sir Clive has returned. Clive! What news from Charitina? It's done. Root and branch. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Thank you, my lord. Friends, the Horde has been driven back. The Akashic have been defeated. And we need not fear the arrival of any more, thanks to Clive. Victory is ours. I find it more realistic that we Lubor doesn't want the town it. to dissolve than their sudden money to give them a couple saved days. Dalamil. Lubor, allow me to apologize. Or not. After all you have done for this town, we should never have doubted you. But we did, and for that we are truly sorry. We only hope that you can forgive us. You did more than doubt him. We need you, Lubor. Dalimil needs you. So, if you would still like to be considered for the position of mayor, you have our backing. You do remember that I'm a bearer, don't you? We do. But that is not a stain on your character. Thanks for your approval. <laughs> like, after all of this, you're the last person whose opinion I would give a fuck about my character of. You know what I mean? Like, fuck this guy. Fuck Conrad and fuck Natalie. I don't need... Why would we, why would Lubor need their approval at all? He's already a better person than them. He knows that. It is a stain on ours. Okay, there. at least they say that. Okay, at least they'll say that. We thought only of I what guess. we perceived bearers to be. Not what you truly are. So are you going to do that for every bearer now? <laughs> or... The man who saved Dalimil twice over. I see. But I will only accept your proposal on two conditions. Name them. You're one of the good ones. Yeah, black magical like this. Yeah, you can live in the big house with us. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? 
What the fuck am I watching? Firstly, that you will both do everything in your power to rally your people to my cause. If the Town Guard and the Merchants League do not accept my leadership, it will be doomed from the start. Unity is the key to defending Dalamil, and I do not doubt that we shall need to call on our combined strength again. When that time comes, I will expect us all to pull together, just as we did today. <laughs> Minus the stoning. Of course. You have our word. And secondly, you will accept that if I am to lead you, the mistreatment of bearers must end here in Dalamil. Any bearer... It really mimics reality for a lot of minorities. Like these frustrating fucking one-time event things that are like supposed to, you know, supposedly deeply meaningful, but like the truth, you know, in, 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 in truth, you know, I don't know, maybe in truth, a lot of people are just going to revert back to their bullshit. It's just like, uh, within our walls shall be bearer is very much like a blanket term for, yeah, any like oppressed minority essentially. And I think that it's like, remember when they were talking about why is there no people of color in this game? Now I'm like starting to like realize maybe a little bit more why there isn't any, like not that many anyway. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Afforded the same rights as any other citizen. They will not be judged by what they are, but who they are. As we failed to do. It's actually great there isn't. Dude, I, I, I'm sitting here imagining like, Ooh. <laughs> like, ooh. <laughs> and came so there are a lot of brown people in this game that are right here. <laughs> Close to losing everything. We agree to your conditions. And we have only one in return. <laughs> that you continue to work for the good of Dalimil. As you always have. Dude, imagine, imagine even, dude, imagine, imagine even saying the words out of your mouth to this guy. And we have a condition of our own, bro. Dude, and then he says the most condescending shit ever. That you continue to work for the good of Dalamils you always have. Dude, this is so... I'm sorry, chat. I have to get out of this quest because I'm gonna fucking freak out. I have to get out of it. I, I, I'm sorry. That dialogue right there is, like, too much. How fickle fate. That's too much, dude. Not so long ago. Wow. I myself the, to leave wow, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. The guy's still so clearly a fucking asshole, dude. Continue proving you're useful, boy. Exactly, dude. Is that not how it sounds? Dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Nice. Long as you keep doing what we think you should, boy, you can stay around. Like, dude. And what? I find myself her leader. Hardly. Hardly, Lubor. <laughs> Hardly, bro. Fuck. What a terrible storyline. Here. Yeah. For everything. Jeez, man. Lubo. About the children. Fear not. I disagree. I think the quest line shows a material reality for the oppressed. No, I understand that. I get well, I I mean, I guess I don't fully understand that. Not in the way that you would. Right? But like I understand you guys have like made the point of the material reality. I don't like the blind naivety that is also accompanying it. That's my problem. Yeah, it, it's it, unfortunately it is it is depressingly realistic, but I don't find the naivety to be re quite as realistic. Maybe I'm wrong, but like the that happens too. Unfortunately, that's so fucked up, dude. That's so fucked up. That's so fucked up. I just don't, I can't even, it's just, it's uncomfortable. It's so cringe, dude. It's so just like, how, course. like, I just. 
relieved of your responsibility? I would sooner face another horde of Akashic than see them brought up as outlaws. I'll make sure... There are people that are content with increment... In incrementalist inclusion oh like 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 being accepted ever just ever incrementally every once in a while like sometimes they'll have to deal with the racist shit and the people like fucking fucking them over but like as long as they get accepted every now and again that's so fucked up dude that's so fucked up They're safe here i don't know dude humans are disgusting man I'm gonna get all nihilistic and turn into a fucking seraph and fly away screeching into the night, dude. Like, humans are just unbelievable. Well. That's why this moves me, actually, because it's, 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 you're seeing it as, like, more painfully realistic in that aspect as well. That, like, not only are people so blindly, like, like, racist and, and, in some, and like, for, for the sake of a, of a, uh, of a situational virtue they just like they're they're willing to say and do whatever when in truth like it's really just like a temporary arrangement and like unfortunately people can kind of like get away with just coming out and doing that thing like once or twice and putting on that facade and then can like immediately go back to like getting away with like the same bullshit that they've been doing or am i interpreting that completely wrong <laughs> and not just the children but everyone in dalamel yeah, exactly. I'll do my best. Can't have all your hard work going to waste. Conveniently being not prejudiced just for the convenience of your own safety and stuff. It's it's the I I don't know. It's tough because I like I like Lubor a lot and I feel like he shouldn't be here. You know, I feel like he he deserves better. Like Lubor sh like I don't know, dude, if he cares, I don't know. He can make his own choices as an individual, and that's the most important thing. But if it were me, I would set these guys up with whatever I thought was, like, what they needed, and then I would, I would do, I'd peace out, dude. I'd, I'd, I'd take those kids, and I'd fucking deuce out.